How you guys doing today? This is Jason with Tunatech, and today I want you to forget about Samsung. I want you to forget about Apple. We know they are the top of their game when it comes to flagship phones, as well as other phones. But it's time to think outside the box. Today, we have something interesting for you. So what am I talking about? Well, there's a company that's been known and is picking up speed in the market of cell phones in the Android world. Now, this company, Motorola, is known mainly for their mid-range to low-range budget-style phones. They, at one time, were actually in the flagship market, but I guess with heating competition, they kind of, you know, stepped out of that. But today, I've got something called Motorola Edge X30 5G. Now, before you say anything, this is a Chinese only version of the phone. They recently released a global version and I'll kind of breeze, breeze through the differences, but this phone right here in China started out like 500 bucks with eight gigs of RAM and 120 gigabytes of storage. But what are some other things that this thing has in it? Well, it was released in December it's got a um, glass front and back, Gorilla Glass 5, not Victus, so that's maybe one area where they cut some corners. Um, it's got a HDR10 Plus screen, to OLED, and it does, I wanna say 144 hertz, 144 hertz refresh rate. It's 6.7 inches, and it's a 1080 plus, 1080p plus screen, which I mean, in reality, it's 1080 by 2400. Um, it's wearing Android 12 on my UI 3.0. It's wearing the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is a four nanometer processor from Qualcomm. And in terms of Android, this is the flagship processor. This is the 128 eight gig version, but they also have a 256 18 eight gig and 256 12 gig of UFS 3.1 storage. The back has two, three cameras, a 50 megapixel wide, 50 megapixel ultra wide and a two megapixel depth. Uh, for some weird reason, this phone does not shoot past 4K 30 frames per second. That might be changed in an update, but that's all I can say about this, at least the Chinese version of it. The front selfie camera is a 60 megapixel camera. Uh, crazy, again, it says 4K 30 frames per second, maxes out. What's interesting about this is there is a pro version of this in China that has a six, the same 60 megapixel selfie camera, but it's under the screen, the new technology where it kind of hides it like the Samsung Fold 3. It's got stereo speakers, but no 3.5 millimeter jack, which is kind of strange for Motorola. I would assume most of the budget for, uh, friendly phones would have that. Uh, and that's about it. The fingerprint sensor is mounted on the side, which doesn't really bother me. 5,000 milliamp hour battery and 68 watt charging, which they say the 68 watt charger is included in the box. So that's that. Now, I breezed through that really quickly, but I really wanna to get to the phone here. Now this has been opened, it's the Chinese version, but it's been opened due to the fact that uh, we had to get Google Play installed because obviously in China they don't have it pre-installed. We'll check that out and see if that's correct. But it does do 5G and supposedly supports most, or if not all, bands in the US. Um, and everything else is here. It's it's in Chinese, so there's a whole lot on here. But you see the Qualcomm, Moto, Dolby Atmos kind of stuff. Just a plain old black box, nothing extravagant. So we'll open it up, and as you can see, it has been opened. There's a little grip here. Obviously, it just comes right apart. So I'm gonna set this off to the side right here. So in the box, oh, almost broke the phone already. In the box. We have an included SIM ejection tool, a Chinese handbook, and in addition to this stuff, we also have a plastic case, which these are the kind of cases I usually get for my phones anyway, so I like this. Um, it doesn't bother me, uh, and it protects the phone. So included, Samsung and Apple don't do this anymore, and a lot of phones don't, a 68, 
watt charger. Isn't that nice? 68 watt charger included with the cable. What blows my mind, you guys, is that, now this isn't readily available in the US, and I get that, uh, but $500, it includes all that stuff. And when you're spending twice that much on a Samsung or Apple device, granted, they are nice phones, but you're not getting everything that you should be. So, with that being said, let's get to the vice. Now, it comes in a couple colors. This is the blue color. As you can see, that shimmery, it's very smooth, and if you heard it kind of fall off the box, it's very slippery, and it's kind of a fingerprint magnet. You got your three cameras, like I said, 50, 50, and two megapixel, and you got your flash. Uh, it says Motorola branding, and this is not a fingerprint sensor. This is just a Moto logo. <laughs> it kind of rhymed there. On the bottom, you got your SIM tray, USB Type C, bottom fire speaker. On one side, you got probably your power button and fingerprint scanner, and you got your volume keys on the top, pretty plain. On the other side, you got your. I, customize moto button to do anything you'd like i'm going to power it on it probably won't have much of a setup if google play is installed but either way uh, we'll fire it up but before we go any further why that is firing up i'm going to set it down right here you guys can watch that animation interestingly enough like i said they just announced a couple Hello, days ago uh, the global version of this phone so and the global version of that phone is called the Moto Edge Plus, and that's where it's going to be in the US. In Europe, it's going to be, I think, the I want to say the Edge 30 Pro in Europe, so the Plus here in the United States. These are exactly the same phones with a few key differences. So they both run the same Snapdragon processor, both have the same size screen same resolution same refresh rate same 360 hertz touch sampling rate um but they re they equip each one with a 4800 milliamp hour battery as opposed to a, a five as in this version and um this does not have wireless charging it only has wired charging whereas the two global versions will have uh 10 or 15 watt wireless charging and that's pretty much it. There's no confirmation on whether or not they will include the pro version of this with the, um, with the special edition with the under the screen uh, display. But here it is, pretty opened up right here. I, I see Chrome, Google, uh, Gmail, Google, uh, and the Play Store. So someone did install this. Now, something you need to know before you go out and order this is two, a couple of things. You're gonna see some bloatware from some Chinese apps most of the time we're just holding them you can hopefully um, delete those i don't know for a fact but a lot of times you can yeah see so you can uninstall these so you don't have to use it the other thing is is what i've noticed with xiaomi phones which again are a, uh, a global phone maker but not in the us is that some uh, carriers including t-mobile at&t and from personal experience with at&t even though Xiaomi will support 5G volt uh, and Wi-Fi calling, if it's not approved by at and with the 3G shutdown, they are forcing customers to get rid of those phones. And I had that issue with my wife's Xiaomi. Um, so keep that in mind. But this is the Moto Edge X30. This is a return to them for the flagship with cameras, processors, and they did cut a few corners. Obviously, it's, it's not um, going to be top of the line with everything else, but... I'm interested to see what this can do at this price. For $4.99, it's great. Now, interestingly enough, I told you, like I said, the only real difference between this version and the global version is obviously software and the fact that the, the global version has a slightly smaller battery and it does include wireless charging, which this one does not. But crazy enough, this phone starts at $999 in the US. And they're gonna offer a hundred dollar discount. I'll leave a description in the uh, a link in the description below. I don't know if it's available yet. And as of my checking of today, it wasn't in there yet. But uh, it'll be a, overall generally a hundred dollars cheaper in the U uh, UK. So, I mean, they're returning to the flagship specs, but I think they should have kept the pricing very similar to what they had in China. But that being said, you guys, what do you think about this phone? And what do you think about Motorola's? I guess you could say 
return to the flagship devices that they used to. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Also, let me know if you want me to hear more about this phone and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.